guys and welcome to today's video where I will be unboxing and setting up feeder insects. A lot of people tend to have questions about where I get them from and how to house them so I figured I'd do it in this video. So let's open these boxes. So I have, first of all, we have some mealworms. Then we have some Morio worms. And then we have two lots of standard silent brown crickets. Oh, and we also have wax worms. First, I'm gonna focus on mealworms. So these guys, I'm actually gonna change up how I house these for the longest time I've just kept them in the tub that they come in but you'll know that if you've had mealworms for a while their substrate or whatever they come in ends up just being like their poop and broken down food and yeah it, it really smells bad so I wanted to make a change and I wanted to put them on wood shavings they usually come in wood shavings but they don't have enough also I wanted to give them a bit more room so what I got was a free tier tower thing which I'm gonna house them in so let's do that so what I've done with these is added a bit of extra ventilation they do obviously have them between the drawers but I just wanted a bit more and I've got my wood shavings I actually got these from Wilkinson's they were only 60 pence which I thought was quite good so let's empty them into this bowl because I just know I'm going to make a mess. Okay, so I never use this stuff, like I have guinea pigs and everything, but I've, oh my goodness, I've never used this stuff before and it goes everywhere. I will definitely need a Hoover. But I wanted to break this up a little bit in this bowl, so we have plenty for the mealworms. excuse any mess you may see on this carpet I will get the hoover out after I film this video but basically we now have our wood shavings I'm also actually going to add in a bit of insect fuel in here just to mix it around a little bit so they can eat some people will put these in oats I actually used to as well I think oats work fine the only thing is they do tend to have too much phytic acid in like it obviously when your mealworms eat that that goes to your geckos so it's not bad, but it's not ideal. So I thought I would try this. Um, if I feel like they need a little bit of a boost, maybe a few, uh, add a few oats in, but I figured this might work a bit better, hopefully. And um, that's the interesting thing about when you have reptiles in particular as pets, you tend to have to look after their food. It's not like you can put in a few pellets or just some pre-made food. Um, most of the time you've got to take a lot of care of their food because if the food's good they'll be good so let's tip these all in okay I'm just gonna mix them around a little bit so I think they have plenty of room in here and what I'm gonna be feeding them today is some courgette and some carrots usually what i do is i have vegetable scraps from the guinea pigs and i usually pop it in with the mealworms i'm going to use only quite thin slices of courgette because i don't want them going moldy and mucky it might work a lot better now i have um wood shavings you may recall in the video i did when they used to live in oats it started to go very moldy so hopefully this works a lot better i'm now going to do the same for morio worms now the good thing about morio worms is they take forever to actually pupate. The only time I've seen them pupate is when they've been released into my gecko's tank by accident. So basically one's managed to escape when feeding and it's got under the dirt and pupated, hatched out as a beetle. And recently I found another one in Minnie's tank. So if you remember Bertie, the one I accidentally created, um, he now lives with Ziggy as part of her cleanup crew. And so Minnie now has one, and on Instagram, in my Instagram story, we did a poll, should we call it Bruce or Bethany, I think? And it was neck and neck, it was 50% each. 
that was up for a whole 24 hours and nobody could decide. So I'm going to put a poll up here somewhere. You can decide. We need an answer. Is it called Bruce? Is it called Bethany? This floor is so messy. Okay, so I'm going to do the same again with the Mario worms. As I was saying though, the great thing about Mario worms is they don't pupate too quickly. So as feeder insects, they last a long time. However, I would not suggest using them as a main diet because they aren't the healthiest the best thing is to just offer variety so something like morio worms and wax worms only offer occasionally but they can be part of the diet so let's pop them in here i do actually have a few morio worms left over from the last time i ordered morio worms and i am thinking of possibly um allowing them to pupate and breeding them so maybe we have more and i don't have to buy them I swear I read somewhere that they only pupate when they're on their own. Don't know if that's true, but I may have to try that. Once again, we're going to give them some courgette and some carrot. Oh, if you're from America, you might not know a courgette. That's a zucchini, by the way. We just call them courgettes. Um, they can handle the bigger amounts because they have a much bigger bite. But hopefully they do well in this. So from feeder insects that will last you ages to ones that will probably last you a month if you're lucky, waxworms. These guys tend to metamorphosize fairly quickly if you keep them in room temperature or above. So it is advised that you put these in the fridge if you want to make them last longer, especially if you only have one gecko. These tend to get fed off fairly quickly with all of the ones I have, but I still get quite a few moths at the end of the month so what you can also do i thought i'd let you know is you can feed off the pupa so when they do turn into chrysalis you can feed them to your geckos i don't know if they're much healthier because wax worms aren't the healthiest but you can still feed them off if you wish so what i feed these guys is a little bit of honey by the time they get to you as you can see they're fairly like big they are ready to pupate so they've probably been fed up fairly well so i give them honey if you know anything about waxworms you know they're actually a pest to a lot of beehives so the wax moth will lay the eggs in a beehive and the wax worms will eat through beeswax that's where they get their name from so they enjoy a bit of honey but just remember these aren't the healthiest thing for your gecko and finally we have crickets so what i always order as i said at the start is silent standard brown crickets standard is the size um, and that's for all the adults it seems to work well for them what i always do though is feed off the biggest ones first so it gives time for the little ones to grow um, and you don't get ones that get too big most of the time i will say i get a lot of healthy ones they usually so i'm just altering my camera they usually turn up alive obviously you get the odd dead one but in comparison to getting them in shops these tend to do well i always order mine online as you saw because they came in a box and like pretty much the entire time i've had leopard geckos i've ordered from internet reptile i believe they used to be known as a roach farm on ebay but i'm not 100 percent sure but that's where i've always ordered them from one just jumped out okay come back excuse me thank you okay so <laughs> And what I like to do with crickets is give them plenty of room. A lot of people say that they usually jump out. There was a fine example there where that one did. But the majority of the time I'm fine. I don't really get any problem with them. You will get more of a problem with smaller ones. The micro ones, they will really jump. Uh, if, as long as you give them a big enough cage, they should be fine. Ideally, I would prefer to give them more space, but this is what I've got for now. I also decided to put in wood shavings for today. So we'll see how that works. And I'm going to pop them in some courgette and cucumber, not cucumber, carrot. And uh, yeah, hopefully they get on well with that. As well as this, I'm actually going to pop in a bit of bug gel. Um, although they get some hydration from their food, I just want to just make sure they're properly hydrated. Stick a bit there. There you go. And just remember, like, everything you put into these go into your geckos. So make sure you can get them as healthy as possible for the best results. If you get your live food, you don't feed them at all, and you feed them to your geckos, you're pretty much giving them nothing. So, uh, and I know people who, I think I've said this before, where the gecko's tail has been really, really skinny, and they don't know why it is. When I said, well, do you gut load the food? They say no, and as soon as they do that, you know this gecko can be eaten constantly but it's just not putting on the weight and it's because their food isn't just full of 
nutritious stuff. So it's important to do that. I think I mentioned that in every kind of insect video like this, but um, it's a very important part of looking after reptiles. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully the mealworms and everything turn out well. If I have any problems or if you have any tips for me, let me know. But if I have any problems or if it goes well, I will update you guys. But thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Thank you.